Sarah Alder, the one who fought back, the one who changed the world. I was so excited about the scene with, with Alder and Scylla because they're both such fiercely brilliant, intelligent women. I just couldn't wait to see the fireworks. And they delivered that scene, that interrogation scene, is so chilling and thrilling and everything I wanted. I'm dealing with this spree and I can't, in whichever shape or form that comes, you can't back down of what my quest was to get to the truth. And to do that, I needed to have General Alder come at her full force. The first thing that happens is just Zilla being mesmerized by meeting Alder in person. Uh, she never expected to, she never wanted to really. She had studied Alder uh, since she was a kid. Alder was always the symbol for evil who held up the system. And she created and sanctioned the system that marginalized and enslaved witches. Scylla tries to make a point that, you know, yes, you, you have a military, and yes, isn't it nice that, that people have made a place for witches, but the burning times never stopped burning, and that we will always be others. So that's not something that Scylla's gonna let us forget, and that's very important to the series. Scylla's willing to give up anything. She was willing to die for the cause, and she let them torture her. It didn't matter, she was stronger than that. That really was a genius move by Anacostia to bring Rael in because it does tear down the wall that protects Scylla. I never wanted the spree to be this sort of easy thing to hate. The point that they're trying to make is a valid point in terms of conscription and in terms of states owning bodies. You know, this is a problematic thing. General Alder has had plenty of time to do something about the spree. Maybe it's time for a change. You know, the Spree are a very, very tough enemy to fight. They're always changing. There's no leader. And Alder hasn't had a huge victory with the Spree for a while. She has great pressure from the president to deliver a, a breakthrough. I don't think Alder is necessarily a big fan of this president. And I think that lies in the language that the president takes towards Alder. You know, almost mocking her. Oh, so if I drink this potion that you make, when you say something like that to Alder, you're, you're mocking her big time and it's undermining where I come from, what I stand for. That is a point where she goes, hang on a minute, and the first time where she sees a crack. I think Anacostia is starting to see stuff in Alder that she doesn't love, but you know, Alder was hugely important to her growing up. It's the beginning of, of a whiff of something that Anacostia is not familiar with, and she may be picking up on Alder's sort of desperation to deliver something. So we're, Anacostia starts to see her make choices that she doesn't love. You see all the questions arising with Anacostia, the disagreements that she has of the certain actions that General Alder is taking. When it first starts to happen, she doesn't realize the audience is going to see that change more with Anacostia than with, with General Alder. Tell me about the dream cell. How do you know about that? It's classified information. Sarah, I'm your head of intelligence. I have friends at The Hague, too. I don't think General Alder is a big fan of Petra. General Alder says that whiskey is the one thing that civilians got right. I love that line. The fact that Alder loved whiskey so much, I was like, can I not have a glass and maybe propose to share a glass with her at first? But then I decided to take the glass away from her. And just to, you know, defy her at that moment and just make sure, like, you know who's in charge here. We start to see some, some stuff from Rael we haven't seen before when we, we see her knock out the class. This is somebody with a massive potential that really doesn't quite know yet how to control it. When we hear uh, Beth Trefine kind of get on Rail's case about that Christo-pagan nonsense that she's trying to bust out in class, we really get a sense of the witch's distrust of the church. You know, the church was the ancient enemy for, for centuries. Kalita's massively powerful. The Turim have been so disrupted and displaced. I won't say she's sort of the high priestess of that community, but she's up there. Kylie, who played Kalita, she was just formidable, you know, because she, she she was that little girl. She came onto set and you, she was just in her own and had, wasn't phased by anything, not even older. Sometimes I felt intimidated with the liberty that she took to 
talk back to to Alder. I mean, nobody does that, and it, it gave us so much to work with. It was interesting how Alder, for I think the first time almost, didn't have say in the fact that somebody would talk the way that Kalita talked to her. So Kalita is afflicted with this horrific disease, which is sort of this black webbing that is covering her body and affecting her vocal cords and making her make these sort of vocal manifestations that have that create havoc in her environment. We don't really know yet where this disease is coming from, but we know that it's horrible and that it's not a natural disease and that it's incredibly dangerous.